In this chapter, we're going to be talking about five different types of transformations. Transformation is just when you take an object and you either change it or you move it in the plane. So we're going to talk about reflections, which are just mirror images. We're going to talk about translations, which are just um, a glide or a slide. We're going to talk about rotations, which as you can imagine is just when you um, spin something or turn it. We're going to talk about a combination of two of them called a glide reflection. It's called a composition and it's because it's composed of more than one thing and that's just a translation plus a reflection. And then finally we will do a little bit of work with dilations. We're going to bring our compasses back. Dilations are just an enlargement or a reduction. Now the one thing we do need to know is we need to learn a very important word and it's something called an isometry which sounds like it should be measuring something, but it's not. An isometry is just a rigid transformation. This means that you're going to have an exactly congruent figure. It's just located somewhere else in the plane. And we're going to give some examples of what's a rigid transformation and what is not a rigid transformation below. So get out a pen or a pencil and get ready to do a lot of drawings. An example of a non-rigid transformation would be if you took this heart and then um, you created another heart, but you stretched it out so it wasn't the same shape at all. It was like this. That would be a rigid transformation. I'm a non-rigid transformation. Or if you scrunched it together like this, these are not congruent figures at all. And so that would be a great example of a non-rigid transformation and fairly easy to draw. For a reflection, it's exactly what you think it is. It's just a mirror image. So I drew a little right triangle and then I drew a line that's going to be my mirror. And we're going to see what happens when you reflect over a line. So get that drawn and let's see what happens. So we have this triangle here and we're going to reflect it. So when we do, we can see that this is our mirror and when we reflect it across there, it shows up exactly on the other side. If we measured the distance from this point to the mirror, it would be identical as this point to the mirror. It would um, form a perfect right angle. We can even draw those in if we connect this and this and we put a point in, we can measure this angle right here. And it will say that it is a 90 degree angle, I hope. And it's hidden up here. Yeah, 90 degrees. And if we measure these lengths, the length of EF, It would be great if I could measure that length. The length of EF will turn out to be the exact length of this point. And so as you can see, the lengths are the, are the same. So your reflection is a perfect mirror image. So now we're going to talk about a rotation, and that is just turning an object a certain amount of degrees. So if we take our heart here, and we make another one, and we bring it down, we can rotate this just by turning it and asking it to rotate a certain amount of degrees. So let's take a look at what that looks like. So we're going to take our triangle here and we're going to rotate it about this little point there. And we're going to do a few different ones. If we rotate it um, 50 degrees, they're going to rotate it counterclockwise. There's 51. If we change this to 
180, it would be exactly opposite. If we made it only 18 degrees, it's just a little bit that way. And you can see that it's just spinning around this central point. Well, luckily, a translation is one of the easiest ones to draw and complete. All you're going to do is take your object and slide it somewhere in the plane. So again, I'm going to take this little heart and um, when I copy and paste this particular one, that is a translation. It has just slid down to this spot. I can slide it over here. I can slide it over there. All of these are examples of a translation. Um, and so that's all that you have to do. If you want to see an interesting one, we'll show that, but don't try to do draw it out. So if I want to translate this crazy jagged edge along this parallelogram to the other side, perhaps I'm going to create some sort of a tessellation. I need the pieces to fit together perfectly. If I translate this, it, all it does is move it to another location, but it maintains its shape size and everything. So we're going to translate it and there it goes. It says, do you want to do it along this marked vector? Yes. And it just slides it across. And so that's all a translation is. If I move this point, it moves on the other side because they're perfect translations and they are an isometry. The best form of a glide reflection to kind of explain what it is would be a set of footprints. So while you think about drawing that, I'm going to show you why this is what is called a glide reflection. We're going to sneak over here. A glide reflection is a translation, so we're going to slide the object and then we're going to reflect it. So what we do is we're going to start with this footprint right here. And first, we're just going to translate it. So we translate it by sliding it up. And so it's up here now. And what we're going to ask it to do now is to reflect across this line of reflection. And so when we reflect it, we get this. So if we got rid of our intermediary picture, ooh, it appears we can't get rid of the picture. But if we ignored this footprint and just looked at the original and the final image, this is not a rotation. Because if you rotate this original picture, the big toe would be pointing downward instead of in a forward motion. So it's not a rotation. It's very different. You slide it, and then you reflect it over a line. And finally, this brings us to a dilation, which is just an enlargement or a reduction. So if our original image is this big starburst, just draw yourself a regular, easy, five-pointed star. If we take that and we shrink it down, this, and as long as we maintain its shape, we keep all the angles the same, they're similar figures, and it's a perfect reduction of the original. That would be a dilation. We're going to save all the coordinate geometry stuff for next class, so bring your iPads and uh, have the graph paper ready.